exercise 411, exercise 411, will take us through learning objective 2, learning objective 2, learning objective 4, and learning objective 5. Let's see what we have here. Break-even analysis, cost, volume, profit, graphing. If you have been listening to me from the beginning, you know I hate graphing, but we'll do it anyways. Horus Society is planning its annual Western Fair Raceway Gala. The gala committee has assembled the following expected costs for the event. Dinner per person, gaming tokens and program per person, so we have two components of variable cost, and the rest are all fixed costs, just one amount. It doesn't say per person, so we assume they're all fixed costs. The committee members would like to charge $40 per person for the evening's activities. Required, compute the break-even point for the gala in terms of the number of people that must attend. So, it's asking us for the break-even point in terms of the number of people that must attend. Well, people are the same as units. So, in other words, we're being asked for the break-even point in units. We're not being asked for the break-even point in sales. So units, which means that is fixed cost divided by our contribution margin per unit. Remember, follow the U's, right? Two U's. Which equals, and here is where the question asks us to take one more step. It doesn't just hand us our fixed costs and, and, and our contribution margin per unit. We've sort of got to figure it out. So let's look at our fixed costs. Well, we have prize payouts of $4,300 plus tickets and advertising, $800. We have private box suite rental of $1,700 plus 1700 And finally, we have lottery licenses of 200 Of the six costs we're given, these four appear to be fixed because it doesn't say per person. Then we have costs per person. So to avoid having to write out a contribution margin uh, or contribution format income statement, we can remember that sales minus variable costs will equal our contribution margin per unit. So let's do that. They want to sell them for $40 minus we have dinner at $10 a person. There's a variable cost. And we have gaming tokens in a program of $2 per person. There's another variable cost. So sales minus variable costs will give us our contribution margin. <clears throat> There's our fixed costs across the top. So if we add these across the top, we will get to... 7,000 and this on the bottom will give us 28. So there is 250 people must attend the gala uh, for us to break even. The second part of the question, assume only 200 people attend the gala, or sorry, 200 people attended the gala last year. If the same number attend this year, what price per ticket must be charged <coughs> to break even? So we're being asked a different type of question here. We want to sell the tickets for $40. We need 250 people to attend to break even. But what if only 200 attend again this year? Then selling them for $40 doesn't make a lot of sense. So the question then becomes, what should we sell them at to break even? Well, this is where the equation method works out very, very well. Remember. Sales equals variable costs plus fixed costs. Now we're told that 200 people are going to attend. So we can put in our variable cost per unit times the quantity plus our fixed costs, and that will give us the total amount in sales that we need. And since 200 people, we need to know what the sales level is to cover these costs. We know our variable cost per unit is right here, $12 and 200 people attending plus our fixed costs I, I put in a CF over here look at this a little dyslexic let me change that for you so there's no confusion into what's going on here fixed cost our fixed costs are 7,000 so we've got to cover off sales have to equal 9400 so if we're going to sell 200 tickets and sales have to equal 9400 we can take the 9400 divided by the $200 and that will give us $47 per ticket so if the ticket sold for 
and we sell 200 of them, we will sell $9,400 worth of tickets. 200 tickets will have a variable cost of 2400 plus a fixed cost of 7000 which gives us total cost of 94 Total revenue equals total cost. We have break even if we sell it for $74. Number three, using the $40 ticket price per person, prepare a CVP, cost volume profit graph for the gala from zero tickets up to 600 tickets sold. So for this one here, remember the cost volume profit, we have to plot our costs, our fixed cost, our variable cost, the vol over the volume that we expect and a profit line. So let me uh, get a slight ruler out here so I can try to make this as straight as possible. Let's get our graph down. This is going to be our volume along the bottom and it asks us to do it to up to 600 units and of course uh, along this line will be our costs. So let's uh, let's start plotting what we know. Well we know our fixed cost is 7,000 so we'll put a line here and we'll put 7k and we'll try to get it parallel to the origin. There we go. There is our fixed costs. Now listen when you're drawing these out uh, you're not going to be exact unless you get some very specific graph paper up you're not going to be exact process of going through it helps organize your thoughts so that's the important thing so there we go there's our fixed cost line now we need a total cost line we know that at a volume of zero our total costs will just be our fixed costs so we need to figure out what our total costs will be at 600 so our total costs at 600 equals our variable cost per unit twelve dollars times the six hundred plus our fixed costs in other words total costs equal variable costs plus fixed costs right total costs equal variable cost plus fixed so what we get here is nineteen thousand so we have to try to figure out where on here is nineteen thousand well if that's seven we can kind of eyeball the same distance call that fourteen k eyeball the same distance up call that 21k and if we extend this up a little bit more we could probably call that 28k and we're asked for 19 so 19 here's 14 here's 21 we'll eyeball 19 about here and we'll come out to about 600 and it looks like we could probably put it right there and we'll start from the uh, uh, fixed cost curve and extend it outwards like that that is total cost so that this portion in here is our variable cost and this portion down here is our fixed cost so there is our cost part here is our volume so we've got C we've got V but this is a CVP cost volume profit graph so what we need is we need to figure out what the profit is well we know that at zero zero if we sell nothing um, we earn nothing. Now remember, this is not cost anymore. These are just dollars, right? So we earn nothing. So we'll start at the origin and we need a point to go outward. So we can say that our total revenue at 600, total revenue, remember, is selling price. Our selling price times our quantity. That's our total revenue. Well, it's telling us to keep the price constant at $40 and to go all the way up to 600 so we'll multiply 40 by 600 and we get 24,000 so where we plotted the 19,000 for total cost at 600 we just keep extending it up there's 21 the next jump is 28 so 24 looks like it might be somewhere here again I'm just eyeballing so if we draw that out there's our profit um, um, sorry there's our sales not our profit sorry careful this is our sales line and this in here represents a loss and this part up here represents our profit and there's our cost volume profit graph now if we wanted to eyeball what the break-even point was uh, we could sort of just extend this downwards here and extend this across somewhere below 14,000 
dollars in costs and somewhere if we go halfway between here there's 300 somewhere a little less than 300 perhaps and this is why I don't like the graphs is because it's such an inexact um, an inexact way to do these things uh, I much prefer to to calculate the break-even point directly but this sort of gives you a visual of how things operate but before you go away Let's keep in mind some of the assumptions we have here. One of the assumptions that we're making is that our costs are linear, that our costs do not change over this range, that from zero all the way up to 600 will face a constant total cost curve. That may not be true. The cost curve, uh, if I can just draw another one here, our fixed cost curve may look like this, but our variable cost curve may start to look like this. Maybe it may curve a little. And our sales curve will probably look the same way because we're selling each ticket for the same price. It may still look like this so that our break even might extend a little further out because we may face higher variable costs at lower volumes. So we're making the assumption that we have linear costs. So a lot of these simplified models work when you keep the simple assumptions, right? Exercise 412 back to learning objective one and learning objective four let's see what we have here using a contribution format income statement well we should be pretty good at that by now right kelly company's most recent contribution format income statement is shown below and sure enough there we have it let's just replicate it because we are going to need it so let's look at our current situation here that we have and we have a total and we have our per unit and let's see we have sales of six hundred thousand dollars per unit is ten less our variable costs of three hundred and sixty thousand and our per unit here is six that gives a contribution margin of two hundred and forty thousand and a contribution margin here of four by the way we can easily see this is a hundred percent this is 60% and this is 40%. Minus our fixed costs of 100,000 gives us an operating income or operating profit of 140. This is given. This is given. I've simply just changed uh, simply just uh, uh, replicated it here for you. This, what do we call this? We call this our contribution margin per unit. What do we call this amount? We call that our contribution margin ratio. You should be very used to the fact that when we do a contribution format income statement, it's sales minus variable cost equal contribution margin, minus fixed cost equal operating income. You should be able to ramble that off nice and quickly. Let's see what's, uh, what's required of us. Prepare a new contribution format income statement under each of the following conditions. Consider each case independently. We have four cases, so let's take them one at a time and see what we get to here. Case number one is saying the number of units sold increases by 30%. The number of units sold increases by 30%. Well, how many units are sold? We're told our sales and our unit cost. Well, if we have $600,000 in sales and they sell for 10 bucks a piece, we just have to drop one zero. It's easy to see that we're selling 60,000 units. And if sales are going to increase by 30%, 30% of 60,000, 3 times 6 is 18, is 18,000. So we'll go from 60,000 to 78,000. So here we go, 78,000 times 10, so our sales will be $780,000. 78,000 times 6, because that cost stays the same, is $468,000. That'll give us a total contribution margin of 312. Our fixed costs don't change, $212,000. Look how easy that was. There's number one. What's number two asking us to do? The selling price decreases by $1 per unit, and the number of units sold increases by 20%. So. We know we're selling 60,000 units. It says consider each case independently. So we go back to the baseline each time. We're selling 60,000 units. Sales will increase by 20%. So that is 72,000 units. But we won't get $10 for them anymore. We will get 
72,000 units will sell at nine bucks. So nine times 72, 648,000. That's just calculator work I'm doing here, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna walk you through it. It's just a calculator, right? Seventy-two thousand times six. Now we're using the original six here, but a different number here because the question says our selling price dropped by a dollar, but it doesn't say anything about variable costs or fixed costs changing. So we assume the same baseline over here. So our seventy-two times six dollars is four hundred and thirty-two thousand. That will give us 216,000 in total contribution margin. Our fixed costs are the same. $116,000 in scenario number two. Let's move on to scenario number three. What do they want here? The selling price increases by a dollar per unit. Fixed expenses increase by 20,000. And the number of units sold decreases by 10%. So if we have 60 to start, a decrease of 10% brings us down to 54,000 units. Step one. Step two, our sales price goes from $10 to 11. So we're going to sell 54,000 units at $11. And our fixed costs will increase by 20,000. There's the scenario. Let's go. 54,000 times 11 is 594,000. 54,000 times the original $6 uh, um, Fixed cost is 324000 Do the subtraction on that. We'll get 270000 Fixed cost increased by 20000 We had 100 so now we have 120 And that will leave us with 150000 on the bottom line. And finally, number four. Variable, variable expenses increased by $0.60 cents per unit. The selling price increases by 15%, and the number of units sold decreases by 15%. Well, we start with 6,000. We got to take 15% off, and it's easy to do when we note that 10% of 60,000 is 6,000, and if 10% is 6,000, 5% is 3,000. 10 plus 5 is 15, 6 plus 3 is 9. So 60 minus 9, we're going to sell 51,000 units. At a new price, the price, we're told, increases by 15%. If we're at $10, 15% of $10 is $1.50. So we'll sell 51,000 units at $11.50. What else is being told to us? Our variable cost per unit increases by six, six, 60 cents. So our variable cost per unit increases now to $6.60 instead of the $6. And it says nothing about our fixed cost. So, Multiplication. 51,000 units at 1150 gives us $586,500. 51,000 units at a cost of $6.60 is 336,600. And we do the subtraction, 249,900. Our fixed costs stay the same at 100,000. That'll give us 149,900. There we go.